Hey there, this is Khadr Electronics Made Easy. So as you can see from the thumbnail, in this video we are going to make a breadboard prototyping board. So what is the main difference between a normal breadboard and this prototyping breadboard? So, so whenever you use a normal breadboard, you need an external power supply with regulators which you can connect on the breadboard. And if you are using power supply from a USB, uh, you either need to cut the USB and connect the wires directly on the breadboard or you need uh, some other adapter which can convert those wires into pins which can fit on this breadboard. Not just that, whenever you want to test the output of your circuit, you either need an LED or similar kind of a load to test it. So these kind of things are already present on this prototyping board. As you can see, there are four LEDs here which have connections to this header pin. You can connect the output of your circuit directly onto this header pin. It will connect to these LEDs. So whenever you're getting the output, the LED will glow. So to avoid that power supply problem, we already have a few regulator circuits and a USB power supply circuit here. So whenever you want 5 volts, you can connect a USB cable from maybe a power bank or a laptop or a USB power supply to this board here, which is a Arduino Uno pin, whichever you use. The same cable can be used to connect to this one and you'll get 5 volts output here, which can be directly connected to the board. Similarly, whenever you want a variable power supply, you can connect a 12 volt power supply here and you can change the voltage using this buck converter which has a preset by turning which you can get a voltage between 1.3 volts to 12 volts. Not just that, there are also four push buttons here. These four push buttons, two are connected to positive voltage and two are connected to negative voltage. So whenever you want a trigger, a positive trigger, you can connect to one of these. And whenever you want a negative trigger, you can connect to one of these. Again, these four buttons are also connected to four pins in this header. And apart from these four LED pins connected here, four buttons connected here, there are two more extra uh, pins here, uh, female pins, which have the positive 5 volts and negative 5 volts. This uh, are directly connected to the USB power supply. So these are the basic features of this board. You can uh, use it anywhere and you need not necessarily be closer to the power supplies. Whenever you want uh, to sit in the bedroom or hall or anywhere and you want to work, you can just uh, connect a USB cable to this and power it up from a power bank or a laptop or even a USB charger from your mobile. So but today we're going to make this and see how we can make it and it's quite a simple build it, it's not very complicated it requires many soldering points but yes it's quite simple and we'll see how to make it first we are going to start with this wooden plank measuring 9 inch by 5.5 inch we're going to paint it black first so that it can look a little better. So as you can see, I have painted the whole uh, wooden board black. Uh, I have painted it in a matte black color as I like it. And now we are going to use two breadboards to fix on this one. If you see, these breadboards have notches on either side which can be used to attach multiple breadboards back to back. This will help in building bigger projects. Now we are going to fix this breadboard onto the plank. As you can see, I am leaving slight gap on either side of the breadboard. This will help in attaching external breadboards onto this one. There is a double sided tape behind this breadboard which can help in fixing the breadboard onto this plank easily. Now that the breadboard is ready, we are going to work on the PCB. So here I have a small PCB which can fit on the wooden plank and I have already uh, drilled holes for the USB pin here. So I am using this uh, USB pin which is salvaged from an Arduino board. This has 4 pins out of which the left hand side 2 pins are corresponding to the 5 volts and the ground. I have already drilled holes onto this PCB to fix it like this. And for the variable power supply, we are using this 12 volts adapter. So this also will fix onto this PCB here. And to vary the voltage, I'm using this buck converter. So this uh, board has low voltage of 1.3 volts and the input pins here will go directly to this 12 volts adapter where we'll be connecting an extra power supply. 
and the output pins of this board are connected to the breadboard wherever we want the supply. It has a potentiometer here of 10 kilo ohm which can be used to change the voltage by turning the preset. So this board goes here. Next we'll also need uh, four push buttons here. These are small push buttons which I got from Amazon. Along with this we'll also need this female header pin. So this will be connected to the push buttons, LEDs and also the 5 volts power supply. So we can also connect this kind of breadboard wires onto this one and connect easily to the breadboard. We are going to use 4 red LEDs here as indicators to measure the output of a circuit. Now let's start by soldering all the components onto the board. After soldering the 12 volt adapter and the USB pin, I connected 12 volt power supply to the 12 volt adapter and identified the polarity. Next, I repeated the same for the USB pin by connecting a USB cable. This will help to make the connections properly without reversing the polarity. After this, I have connected the buck converter onto the PCB and now I am going to make a wire which can extend to all directions of this breadboard. For this, I am using this header pin which can fix easily onto the breadboard and to solder this, I am using a PCB and a small piece of wire. This is how it looks after soldering the header pin onto the PCB. As you can see, this can easily fix on any power rails of the breadboard. Now I am going to solder the other end of this wire to the PCB, like this. Next, I am going to solder this female header pin on to the PCB just beside the USB pin. This was followed by soldering the push buttons. And then the LEDs. Here I am using a 390 ohm resistor for each LED in series to limit the current. I will connect the positive end of the LED to the resistor and the other end to the header pin. And the ground of the LEDs will be directly connected to the ground of the power supply. Next, I am going to connect these green LEDs with series 1 kilo ohm resistor to the 12 volts power adapter and the USB power rails. This will help to indicate whether the power is on or not. Next, I added some hot glue to the ends of the PCB which can act as spacers. This will help to protect the terminals in the back side of the PCB from directly touching the base. I stuck this to the wooden board with some more hot glue. Now the board is ready and we are going to test it by connecting a USB cable to the USB pin. As you can see the green light glows indicating that the power is on. Now to test this board, I am going to connect a wire between the positive trigger push button to any one of the LEDs. So here it is the 6th pin and the LEDs start after the 6th pin. So as you can see the LED is glowing, I will change the pin to make sure all LEDs are working. Now I will change this the other end to the 5th pin which is the other positive trigger button and again I will test all LEDs are working. Here to test the negative trigger push buttons, I have connected two LEDs here with the negative pins of both the LEDs connected to the push button pins, that is the third and fourth pins which correspond to negative trigger. So as you can see, when I press the negative push buttons, the corresponding LED glows. Next, I connected a 12 volts power supply to the 12 volts adapter and measure the output voltage. As you can see, it corresponds to approximately 5 volts. Now I slowly turn the preset or the potentiometer to vary the output voltage.
Now that all the components are working as expected, let's label the female header pins for easy identification. So that's all for today's video. I hope you like this video. This is a quite a simple circuit, but yes, it's very useful. As I said, you know, wherever you want, you can work on it. You can make your whole circuit on this one and take it anywhere. You can just pack it into a small box. Or if you want, you can carry your components in a small box, connect it anywhere, power it up from your power bank and test your circuit. Uh, so it's, it's quite a useful one. And I believe, you know, especially the beginners who are uh, starting to learn electronics, for them, this will be a very good build. Uh, it's quite a simple one and it will be very useful to build quite complicated circuits and not just that this also has an option to extend you can just connect your breadboards either on this side you know you want or on this side and you can extend this uh, boards to include many circuits so that's all uh, for today's video if you like this video you might like some of my other videos too i have loads of basic uh, videos teaching you how you can use transistors leds resistors diodes etc and there's also a video uh, on how to use a breadboard if you don't know how to use a breadboard just check it in the description of this video it's a very descriptive video and it has all the connections of the breadboard inside and uh, thank you so much for watching this video uh, please subscribe to the channel and also share this video to your friends so that uh, they can get benefited uh, from this video uh, that's all for today and i'll see you in my next video